can we just talk about um the messy situation that happened last week after the podcast oh after we recorded and god that's stupid what is our life so driving sarah home to philly they're always doing road work as per usual as and, per you. And I forgot to get gas, so doesn't my gas light turn on? Well, it was on. My car doesn't beep when the gas light turns on, so I kind of went into panic mode, and I was like, well, how long has that been lit? Lit. Lit, fam. Like, that's not the kind of lit I'm trying to be. <clears throat> so. <laughs> not trying to be gaslight lit. <laughs> we pull off the highway, go to a gas station that I usually go to um, when I am in these situations, which happens uh rather frequently and we get there and the um the gas station itself is gated off like link fence straight up rentafence.com was there it was weird because only the the gas wasn't working the store was open oh yeah if we wanted a slurpee we could go ahead and head in so (laughs) that wasn't the case though um so we drove to the next one which was very difficult to explain it was on like a hillside and it was very very narrow and I couldn't figure out the order of car. It's hard to explain, okay? there was It was a very narrow space. There were people in front of me that weren't moving up when a space was open because their vehicle was too big. And I was having a mild panic attack. So I was like, I can't do that. I was going to say, I think you were so flabbergasted. that I was flabbergasted. <laughs> that My things gas was going flapping on, everywhere. That you just couldn't figure it out. Okay, so like, that's gas station number two. So we pull off to the left, drive down the street a little bit. And uh, here we are at gas station number three. We pull up to the pump. I go to put my card in, which you should never do. You should always pay in cash on the inside um, because people put like little magnet strips in there and try to take your credit card information. And it's always gas station. And it's always gas stations. Um, so I go to the pump and it's not reading my card. I was like, well, great. So I get my car, reverse it to the, the pump behind it. And it's not reading my card. I was like, oh my God, what is happening? This girl literally screams, the power went out. Their power went out. They had a fire. They had a fire. <laughs> and the power went out. So, but it was crazy because the lights were on and everything was like copacetic, except for there was. Well, no is that gas. your word of the day? Copacetic. Wow. Flabbergastic. Copacetic. Like I'm on a roll. Hey, twenty five. I'm here. Yeah, but um, I'm holding my head up, my hair up by a chip clip. This so. is also true. She is using my chip clip. I'm gonna need that bag. My pitas are gonna go <laughs> stale. <laughs> I am <laughs> laughing but serious. Um, so we go to the fourth. And this kind woman tells us that the power went out because God knows how long I would have stood there before anybody told me anything Honestly, was wrong. Honestly, woman, shout out to you because you were a real one. She that really night. came through. So then the next we drive, the nearest gas station after that was pretty far. Maniac, right? Yeah. So I mean, that's in Arizona. <laughs> um. So <laughs> Philadelphia, uh. Arizona. Uh. So. We get there and I pull up and I'm like, oh my God, what is happening today? I get out of my car and this car pulls up behind me and this woman yells out the window. And isn't it the woman from the the, uh, the previous gas station? That's Diesel. <laughs> I was about to put Diesel in my car. What was happening? I couldn't tell you, but we persevered on the fourth trip. Are you good? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I'm just enjoying this great Monday with my champagne. Cheers. Cheers, let's clink. ASMR. Except we're using wine glasses because I don't have aren't these the biggest wine glasses that I could find? Why don't you fill it up to the top? Like who are you? Who am I? I'm a person who has to drive after this. Probably gonna have to pull off the side. No, I got gas before this. But hi. Uh this is Esoteric (laughs) Oddities. Did we say that? No, welcome. Welcome. Hi, that's Sarah. That's me. Yep, that's me. You're supposed to say that's Jonathan. Oh, that's Jonathan. Let's try that Sorry. Okay. That's Sarah. That's Jonathan. Wait, isn't it weird that you're saying Sarah, but you're not Sarah, and I'm saying Jonathan, and you're not Jonathan? Because I'm introducing you. Oh, I'm that's being how that chivalrous. works. chivalrous. See? see uh, I mean, I can use big words, too. I'm not 25. Yeah, see, I don't, I use big words, but I don't even know the context here. There is no context. <laughs> so today's topic... I don't even have anything up on my computer. Today's topic is um, freak show and oddities. Freak shows. Um, I'm super excited. This was picked by Jonathan. Um, Yes. I think I'm going first. Yes. Um, I don't know, but let's talk a little bit before we jump into our story. So today. What? (laughs) 
I'm living forever just mouthing things. Mouthing things. Just talk to me. We have got cotton candy Ferris wheels and just a hint of murder. And hair. And hair. Probably a lot of hair. Um, But really quick. Do you go over the topic of freak shows in yours? Because I just want to talk about the freak shows themselves before we dive into the I don't think I do. Also, none of mine were murderers. So. Oh, okay. Well, maybe some of mine were. Plot twist. Plot twist. Um, Spoiler alert. But so freak shows. Um, let's um let's take that really sensitively. When we no, say... I'm serious. Well, in in fully being totally honest, it's a very disturbing thing. So you take a large group of people that are either disabled or differently abled. Um, I guess you can say. Um, people who are abnormally developed. Out of these. Some of them have high IQs and some of them are mentally challenged. And they, people would put them on display, um, highlight their abnormalities, and market them as unusual freaks. For money. For money. For hella profits. Hella, hella. Lots like, of, and it was a family activity. It was Barnum like. Barnum and Bailey. Mm-hmm. Coney Island. Listen, we're not trying to come for you, but we're just, this is in the, I want to say all of it's in the past, but I think there are a couple freak shows in America. I think America might be it. I'm sure someone's going to correct me if I'm wrong, but I know the TV show was on, um, the Freak Show TV show. I don't think it's on anymore. Crazy because most of the, um, most of those individuals are um, from other countries. You don't see a lot of like American made. I mean, when I did my research, you see a lot of American made like, yeah, Freak Show individuals. Well, because they travel the world and they they like pull them from different places, but um, and they all end up, but they all end up in the U.S. Yeah, because I think that's where most of the um, most of it was. But um, then the people play mind games with them and um, you know make them feel worthless without them. Like, no, if if you're not here, what are you going to do in the real world? You know, you can't get a job. Look at you. No one's going to hire you. Manipulation. That's manipulation, people. Absolutely. But okay. So with that being said, most were underpaid. Most of them were very underpaid unless they were drawing large crowds. And some of them, um, especially with uh, Barnum and Bailey, were ac- some of them actually retired to be millionaires in today's money. Like I did uh, one of the guys, I didn't study him, but he ended up um, retiring with what would have been today $7 million. That's and he retired crazy. at an early age. Uh, I know it did not go that way for a lot of people, probably most people. Uh Also, the term freak. I know a lot of people. um, Triggering word. Yeah, it's a triggering word. However, some of them enjoyed the label freak, went with it, and were like, you know what? This is me. I'm going to own it. Call call it what you want. If I'm a freak, I don't care how you look at me when I walk to the bank with this fat check. Thank you. Um, Then again, you know, that can't be said for everybody. Obviously. Take it with a grain of salt. Right. But, I mean, um, the one guy that I did it on, he seemed... How many people did you do? Two. Okay. He seemed pretty um, happy. With All right, let's, way... let's just jump into it. All right. So, um, first things first, I have the three-legged man. So, um, Francisco Lentini was born on May 18th, 1889 in Rosalini, Italy. Lentini, Rosalini. That's literally all I kept saying as I was re- researching this. <laughs> it's like, that's where my mind goes. Um, he was one of 12. His family joked that technically he was one of 12 and a half children. Cause he had Stop. Three legs. Mom and dad, you better cut it out with I'm that dad saying. joke. I can't take you with the damn chip clip in your hair. I, well, it's saying it because I can't. Amazing. I didn't wash my hair today. I can't get it together. If you guys could see, if this podcast was visual, <laughs> our ratings would be skyrocketing I'm right saying. Now. All right, continue. I'm sorry. His twin brother, who had one leg and a set of balls, was born attached to Francisco's <laughs> Why did you say it? You waved your arm. Why? <laughs> because. Okay. Because um, when I was researching, they kept saying genitals, and I was like, no, I'm saying balls, like, because it's 2017. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Repeat that sentence, though. Really quick. Please don't tell me genitals is like a... No, go ahead. Repeat the sentence. They kept saying genitals. I understand that, but he said they have a, he has a set. So they're probably saying he has two dicks. I'm getting there. Oh. Okay. <laughs> then two, two, uh, two sets of balls it is. Oh, so it is dicks? I don't know. Go ahead. Continue. They just said genitals. They didn't specify. I wish they did. Um, so Use your imagination. 
or don't. That's weird. Two genitals. <laughs> <laughs> we have mature audiences. Listening, I'm like mulling things over in really my, uh, my glass of champagne. Literally say things out loud, but I can't. Um, anyway, known as the man with three legs, Lentini actually had four feet. As a mal, as a small malformed secondary foot came out from his third leg, so basically, he had three legs. Four feet. Yeah. Oh my god. Right, a lot going on. In total, oh, I already said that. I guess he had three legs, four feet, sixteen toes, and two sets of functioning balls. Maybe it is dicks. I don't know. They said genitals. I. Let's not get stuck on the genitals. Okay, continue. Francisco's legs were also different lengths. Like, imagine that. Continue. Okay. Sorry, I'm, like, fixing her mic. (laughs) 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 Ew. All right. As a child, Lentini hated his extra leg in parts. I said that in quotes. He often got made fun of by other children for his deformalities. Doctors... (laughs) <laughs> said that because of where his spine was, removal of the leg would end in paralysis. The story of Lentini is sad. He lived with his aunt after his parents refused to have anything to do with him. Even after his aunt taking him in, she enrolled him in a home for disabled children. This allowed Lentini to see children far worse than he was. Doing this made him appreciate life. He learned to walk, run, jump rope, ice skate, and even ride a bike. It is said that Lentini quoted this experience as a major motivation in his life. And this is what I'm talking about. Like, some some of these, like, deformalities really help someone. Like, they made their life. Yeah. I mean, it's who they are. Also. Because this is making people, like, special. Yeah. You're not just a two-legged person, two-armed person, two eyes, one nose, one mouth. Yeah. In 1889, at the age of eight, Lentini moved to the U.S. and became an instant sensation in the freak show world. Lentini was witty and also and always charmed the crowds. Lentini was said to have u- unusual agility and amazing control over his extra part. Hmm. His best performing act was kicking a soccer ball with his extra limb. As he got older, Lentini's performances focused more on his charming character. Well, that's good. At least he was good. Um, really quick rewinding. I I do want to say that going to a place where people have it worse off than you and feeling inspired is kind of heroic. Shitty. Yeah, but like to find the for him maybe. But my thing is other people who have deformities and di- disabilities are not here to be your example of if they can do it why can't you you know like sometimes i hate like i hate being people who are like that but like on facebook when i see for example someone posting a video of a guy with like one arm at the gym and people are like well what's your excuse and i'm over here like what you're you're you probably don't even notice you're doing it but you're taking that person and you're like demean you're just kind of Using them as an example as like, you know what? Your life sucks, but at least it doesn't suck as bad as that guy who has one arm. He's at the gym. Like, why aren't you at the gym? Oh, right. It's kind of like it, It's weird. Yeah. Them. And um, interesting to... Think about. Yeah. Because there are people with disabilities are clearly not here to be an example of, of what you could... Oh, my God. You shouldn't God, be yeah. thankful for what you have because they don't have it. Then you're literally putting them in a, in a box... Quite literally, putting them in a box, putting them on display. But you, you get what I'm saying. Especially nowadays, I feel like a lot of people aren't sensitive on. No, and it's. Like, and I'm not saying you aren't. I'm not coming at you. I'm oh, just saying, I didn't like, even think of that. <laughs> I didn't even think that. I'm subtweeting you. I'm like, yeah, this, you this woman subtweeter. Is <laughs> at me. At me. Or at me next time. Don't at me. Um, no, but it's kind of like I just want to say this and move on. But it's kind of like when people give money to the homeless and they tweet about it or they like post a picture about it. It's like you're supposed to do it because you want to do it. You're right. You're not looking. Oh, come on. Not really the same topic, but. No, I get what you're saying, though. Kind of similar. I get what you're saying. While Lentini did interviews, he would prop his extra limb on a stool. He answered questions from his regular hobbies to details about his sex life. Ooh, scandalous. Interview interviewers also asked about shoes and if it was difficult to buy in a set of three. Um, he 
told people that he would buy um, sets of four and then give one two to his um, one legged friend, which I thought was that nice. is so. Isn't that so cute? cute. Yeah. <laughs> and they would have matching kicks. Matching kicks, and it's like you're my friend, and you're you have these same issues that I have, and I'm gonna help you out. Oh, that's because now he doesn't have to buy two pairs of shoes. It's true. So uh, Francisco was a really good guy. That'd be expensive if they were Louboutins. Yeah, same. I'm just saying, if he wants to hit it up with the red bottoms. Right. So although he had a difficult childhood, he had a pre- pretty regular life. Um, he married a woman named Teresa Murray. Um, the pair got married and they had four healthy children. Lentini toured until he died at the age of 78 in 1966. Wow. I was not expecting that. Yeah. I was not expecting him to get that old. Yeah. Um, his career lasted 40 years and he worked with every major circus from Barnum and Bailey to Coney Island. They also used to call him the king. Yes, king. I'm saying. That's great. I know. That's awesome. He had, I, I don't know. He seemed like. He had a pretty good time yeah. from coming from parents that don't want anything to do with you to being accepted and loved by fans, basically. True. I love it. Claps. Love that. You don't peak those levels. I know. Sorry, headphone wearers. Sorry, guys. I tried to do it above it. Thought. No, you did good. Next story. I have two stories. Okay. Next one is the woolly baby. <gasps> no. Now, um, this one is not as. I guess famous or kind of like as great as the other one. Right. Um, famously known as the Wooly Girl, Alice Elizabeth Doherty was born in Minneapolis on March 14th, 1887. The Wooly Girl, though? The Wooly Girl, that's what they call her. Okay. The Wooly Girl, you know, they couldn't think of anything better than that. There goes Wooly Wilson over there. Wooly Wilson, Here she Alice. Comes. Alice Wooly. What? <laughs> Stop. Why do these things happen to me? Um, (laughs) When she was born, Alice was covered in two-inch long, fine blonde hair. She had normal parents and a brother and a sister with no abnormalities. Alice. Okay. What? Nothing. What is it? It's an abnormality. Oh, not Like no other fig. No fig. No physical, like, abnormality. Yeah, they were normal. But I didn't want to say that. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Are you going to drink your champagne? Yeah. Leave me alone. I'm talking. No, I'm sorry. (laughs) I just, you looked like you weren't thirsty. I was. I'm thirsty, bitch. (laughs) All right. Hit me with the woolly baby. All right. Woolly baby. What? (laughs) (laughs) Alice is said to be one of the most incredible oddies of all time. Said. I said said because there's a lot. She's using air quotes. I am. You guys can't see. It's okay. Alice was known as the only individual in the United States with a rare condition called, this is going to take me a while, hypercrosis languinosa, or dog face. Awesome. I'm going to call it dog face. Regardless of this, she remained mediocre to the rest of the oddities bunch, such as Fedor Jeffichu. What? Also known as Jojo. These names are weird. Oh, Jojo. I know Jojo. Yeah. He's the one who, re- when I was talking about someone who retired at $7 million. Oh, that was him? Jo- yeah, Jojo. Because he had, they called him Dog Boy or something. Because yeah. Because he had hair everywhere. Yeah. Um, apparently, they, I guess this girl wasn't as famous as them. Um, or Steven Bolskarski. Rumor has it that Alice did not want to be, to, did not want the attention like all the rest. Mind you, you'll know why in like one second. Okay. I can hardly wait. She's scrolling everyone. Alice began her showcase at the at the age of two. That's why she didn't want to be in the limelight because she was two years old. What two year old knows that they want to be in the limelight? Anyway, um, and by showcase I mean she was the showcase. I literally wrote that. <laughs> okay. Um. So this is in quotes. Alice, as she is called, is the is only two years of age, but is as bright as a silver dollar and shows intelligence far beyond her years. This was said by a writer in Masexha, Wisconsin. She has pretty blue eyes and is as frolicsome as a kitten. This man was creepy. You gotta be creepy yeah. to see that. Like, what? Who says that about a two year old girl? She was frolicky like a kitten. Probably because she was hairy and he didn't know what else to compare her to. Well, that's true. At least he called her pretty. At least it's called her a kitten. That's true. People are calling her dog. I called her a dog. <laughs> I know. 
I, I had nodded to you, so they didn't know. Oh, I told on myself. It's fine. At this time, she had no teeth, and they did not know if she was going to grow anymore. Shook. <sighs> Gotta take a little water break there. At age five, Alice was touring in the Midwest with her mother, playing in a storefront with Professor Weller, which was a one-man band. Another quote. This curious little girl seems to be especially interesting to, to the ladies, wrote a reporter of Alice's <coughs> engagement at the Carter Building in Decatur, Illinois. You better, you better take that S off. Illinois. Thank you. Sorry. It happens when I'm reading. That's all right. Don't let it happen again. Like last week when I said kilometers. It's okay. Anyway. Oh, it's because he's from there. Are you triggered? I'm triggered. <laughs> Leave my S out your mouth. <laughs> okay, well, I keep your D in there? Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Mom. <laughs> Please continue. <laughs> Another quote. <laughs> they find a remarkably bright child on a platform with her mother some of the ladies examine the child's features thinking to find that the hair on her face has been put there with hands they found that it had grown there the child's face is round and would be pretty if it were not hidden by the light almost white hair five to nine inches long which grows all over the face has thick as thickly as hair grows on the head of ordinary children on her body which is covered with her clothing the hair does not grow so long but it's quite thick. I wonder if she has to... um Shave. I was going to say use conditioner. Oh, she probably does condition her whole body. Now she's like a two for one. Stop. Tell me why I'm trying to look it up on... <laughs> trying to look it up on Google Images and all they are are Snapchat filters. Girls with dog face Snapchat filters. No, stop. I'm done for. What was her name? Alice the Wooly. Alice. The Wooly Girl. Alice and her family relocated to Dallas, Texas between 1900 and 1910. Alice retired in 1915. She passed away on June 13, 1933 of unknown causes at age 46. Oh, wow. Yeah, she's a I looker. I found a picture. That is not what I expected. I know. Isn't it crazy to like make a picture in your head and then look it up and it's like not? I don't want to say crazy, but if you're near a computer, it's an interesting oddity. So. That's it. Oh, that was good. All right. Woohoo, your turn. Now I can drink my champagne. So. Should have brought the bottle I, down here. I have three. First two are pretty short. Well, the first one's pretty short. Second one's all right. And then the third one is is um, the most interesting. So stick around. You're not going to want to miss it. So the first one that I have is Blanche Dumas. It's spelled Blanche Dumas, but I know that she is not a that's teacher in how Indianapolis. I, that's literally how I read it when you told me. I was like, Blanche. Blanche Dumas. So it's Blanche Dumas. Um, and... Sorry. She's known as the French woman with two vaginas, four breasts, and three legs. <clears throat> so, um, I have to hold my um, Blanche. I have to hold my really like, what is that word? Bladder. No, my comments. I have to hold them in because okay. they're not okay. Safe for work. Okay. So she was born in 1860. And at the age of 25, she was visited by a Brazilian man and added to the pages of uh, Anomalies and Curiosities of Medicine. Um, which according So according to this book, it was written by George Gold and Walter Pyle in 1896. Um, just letting you know, it was a very boring read. I did not read the whole thing, but I actually went to the book. Traitor! And it was so boring. But it was like interesting. It, they took really interesting facts about very interesting people and made it sound like a tortilla chip that had no flavor with no salsa. There was nothing there. <laughs> that is for... literally the weirdest metaphor. But I've you felt ever it, right? Heard. I did. I Thank really you. felt it. Like so, I'm here for it. 
um, a, a quote straight out of that book. Uh, she had very bro- uh, she had a very broad pelvis, to, which is funny because Sarah asked me like an hour ago if she had a pelvis. She asked if girls had pelvises. Oh my god, yes! Yeah. Learning stuff every day. Amazing. At twenty five, so she had a very broad pelvis, two imperfectly developed legs, a supernumerary numerary limb attached to the symphysis, without a joint, but with a slight passive movement. I'll explain it in a second. Uh, there was a duplication of bowel, bladder, and genitalia. At the junction of the rudimentary limb with the body in front were two mam- uh, mammary glands, each containing a nipple. Basically, she had crotch titties. Yikes, a wizard sleeve. <laughs> Should I stop? Stop. Log <laughs> off. Uh, so. <laughs> Her sexual appetite was said to be very pronounced. She was known to have many male admirers, and she would also entertain them with both of her goodies. Um, so she eventually moved to Pelly. That's how they say it in Paris. It's Pelly. Don't say the ass. <laughs> So she became a sex worker for the upper class, basically the elite of the elite, who wanted to know what it was like, would pay a fine price, and she would hang out with them do it okay so uh also upon hearing the stories of a three-legged man with dual genitalia named juan baptista dos santos um apparently he was in paris on a european freak shore tour uh she expressed a sincere desire to have sex with him while there is no solid evidence that the two ever had an illicit meeting there is rumor of a brief affair now that would blow the Kardashian sex tape out of the water on video searches if they were around I'm today. shook. I love Kim K. I'm just kidding. So she eventually... Um, oh, no, that was it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was it. Yep, no, that's it. The end. Blanche Dumas. I love her. That's my idol. There's pictures of her. She had no... Oh, sorry. She had no <laughs> problem posing nude, but they really... Just Google her. And it's, it's an interesting... Did you see Freak Show, uh, American Horror Story? A little bit. Do you remember at the very beginning how they had the woman standing there and she had like a leg... She was like naked. It was a cartoon thing and she was like naked with like a leg coming out of her crotch. Um, well, that Normally was based I would off lie of her. I and say yes, but no. That was based off of her. All right. Blanche Dumas. Thanks for hanging out with us, girl. Blanche. So this next guy, I know I'm going to butcher his name... Edward Beaupre? Beaupre? I think it's Beaupre. Sure. So he was the dead giant whose body was put on display in a window. Yes, it's very sad. Um, I got most of this information from a book called The Anatomy of Edward Beaupre um, by, <laughs> by Sarah Catherine York. She did a really good job. I watched some interviews with her. Um, she's really passionate about this, but she, there was almost no information I could find out there until I came across her book. So shout out to you. If you're listening, you did a great job of compiling information. Um, so I'm going to call him Eddie. Okay. So Eddie was born in Canada in 1881. He was a quote, regular child, you know, whatever regular is, um, until his body began spurting growth hormones at the age of three. So he was hitting puberty at like the age of three. (laughs) <laughs> okay so uh his muscles and his bones grew together um however they did not stop at the time he did not know that he had a, a tumor in his pituitary or on his pituitary gland uh, which prevented his growth from slowing uh, he developed rapidly and they did not know why as far as we know he was the only giant in his family and it is said that he had 20 siblings They all had so many kids back then. Yeah. Whoa. And they were all like one abnormal and then the rest fine. Yeah. So he grew to be eight in or eight feet, four inches tall. And he ended up signing a contract with Barman Bailey in 1904 and appeared at the St. Louis World's Fair. So at the age of 23, unfortunately, he died. Tumors in his lungs show that he died of a pulmonary hemorrhage as a result of tuberculosis. 
So, a man named, I know I'm going to butcher this, Pascal Bonuo. Bonuo? Bonuo? Uh, he was called to deliver Eddie's body to Montreal, uh, where his embalmed body was displayed in the lobby of the Eden Museum. Damn. He did not even get the proper burial. Yeah. What the hell? Um, and before he died, pretty much everything that was in this book was saying that he was like a decent guy. He was funny. He had a sense of humor. Um, but y'all are going to go put him on display in a museum. Do mm-hmm. better. So according to local police reports, uh, visitors lined up to see him, overcrowding the museum, and they blocked the entire avenue. There was so much chaos and excitement that the people got injured and mobbed. Uh, the police limited the exhibit to six months. His body was then sent to the Montreal Circus in 1907. Was, yeah. So he was displayed there until the circus went bankrupt because they were eventually charged with the unlawful display of a dead body. How are they keeping this body, like, undecom- not decomposed? If you, they embalmed it, but embalming back then, if you look up pictures, just be warned that it looks like a half decaying body it's pretty disturbing they like propped him up in a box Mm -hmm. yeah um so then the circus abandoned eddie's corpse in a park shed Mm -hmm. what the hell so uh they were eventually found by police some reports say that kids playing hide and seek actually came across it Um, But all that's really reported is the police ended up finding it. And a man named Delorme purchased his body and it was delivered to his door for the price of $25. Which in today's money is only $622.34. For a whole body. Like, your life is literally priceless. But Mm -hmm. they didn't treat him like this. I'm sad. So, he continues to be passed around to different museums and propped up on display. Um, in an afterword in the book, um, we learned that there was over 80 years of public display. Then he got cremated and returned um, to his hometown, where over 300 distant family members came together for a celebratory reunion. That's sad. That's disturbing. Continued to make profit off of this poor man. Right. Even after he was dead for... 80 years. 80 years of public display. 80 years? How do you keep someone... How do you keep a body? They may, they were making really mad money off of Everybody up. wanted to. I... But, like, what? This, this person was dead. Mm-hmm. So, that's depressing. Um, all right. Are you ready? For the one. The only. Ooh. So, I know if... A lot of people follow the freak shows, um, and you may know of him. This is Grady Stiles Jr., the Lobster Boy Murderer. So, Grady Stiles Jr. was born in Pittsburgh on July 18th, 1937. He had a rare congenital deformity in both his hands and his feet called ectrodactyly. (laughs) More commonly known as lobster claw syndrome. How politically correct. Oh my god, that's who you did. I knew, I had a feeling it was him. Do you know, do you know who this is? Yes. Do you know what happened? Yes. When he, oh. Oh. You were about to blow my cover. I was. We were about to stop the show right there. Because I wish he was still around. Why? Okay, those gestures are not appropriate. (laughs) That's why I didn't say it. (laughs) So essentially he was a bad man though he had two large fingers on each hand same with his toe they looked like pinchers his his father was grady Stiles senior who also had the rare condition and performed in the pittsburgh circus freak show he quickly added grady jr to the show at the very young age of seven so people would come from all over to see the father and son sit behind glass and wave with their deformed hands I can't even see if I was if I lived back then I can't even see myself enjoying something like that like having yourself on display 
No, being like a bystander, being a paying customer to go oh, view me neither. this. I'd be like, I'm not. Maybe because things were different back then and I wouldn't think about how messed up it was, but I feel as though somewhere in my head. I would be like, this isn't right. This is wrong. We're paying money. This man is sitting there. Basically. Waving at us and we're gawking. Okay. So. Um, Grady's legs were also deformed. He spent most of his time in a wheelchair, but he gained a lot of upper body strength from the use of his arms and hands as a mode of transportation. Um, so from now on, when I refer to Grady, I'm referring to junior, not senior, just because his father doesn't really have anything. Um, Besides that. So, years later, uh, Grady met Mary Teresa Herzog. She was a 19-year-old runaway working as a carnival employee, and she often participated in stage su- stage stunts such as fake public electrocutions. Fake public electrocutions. Keyword here. How do you fake that? I don't know. They probably just put her in a chair and were like, we're going to electrocute her, and then <laughs> she did some Oscar award winning... Acting. Yeah. Yes. Um, because, I mean, maybe you got a fog machine, hook it up to her ears. I'm saying. Um, and she also participated in magic tricks. But from a physicality, she, I don't want to say had nothing wrong with her, but like she had nothing wrong with her. She was, quote, uncourt normal. So they fell in love and quickly married. Mary said that Grady was a true gentleman. He was a truly charming man, but when alcohol touched his lips, he transformed into a monster. So, months went by after the wedding, and Grady became more and more mentally and physically abusive. But despite the abuse, they had two children together. Donna, who had no deformities, and Kathy, who did have lobster claws. Acrodactyly. Um, so it is alleged that one day he pinned Mary to the ground and using his claw forcibly reached inside her and tore out her IUD, which is a intrauterine device. They had that all the back then? Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, it's pretty much a physical device that acts as a contraceptive to prevent pregnancies. And it's like, it's surgically placed in you. So. He ripped it out. After this, Mary left Grady, but did not show up to divorce court, which gave Grady full custody of the two daughters. Mary remarried the world's smallest man and fellow freak show performer. They had a child together named Harry Glenn Newman. So then Grady remarried Barbara Browning and had a son, Grady III, who also had lobster hands. So... Grady Jr., Grady III, and Kathy uh, traveled and performed as the Lobster family. So Grady III and Kathy were half-siblings. They had different moms, same dad. Um, And yeah, they traveled as the Lobster family. Then in 1978, Grady's 15-year-old daughter, Donna, which is the um, the girl who does not have the deformity, um, she got engaged to her fiancé and the love of her life, 18-year-old Jack Lane. Allegedly, Donna began skipping school, so her teacher visited Grady to find out what was going on. This is just a little side story. Um, After chatting for a bit, Donna's teacher ended up in bed with the lobster daddy. I like that. Lobster daddy. Mm -hmm. So, later, Grady did not like... um, Well, later it was said that Grady did not like Jack and forbid their marriage. He went as far as to threaten to kill Jack. But Donna saw this as an escape from the grip of her abusive father and planned to marry Jack anyway. On September 27th, 1978, which was the eve of their wedding, it was the night right before they were to get married, Jack showed up at Grady's house to speak with him alone. It was never documented what truly happened that night, but it ended in cold-blooded murder. Okay. I thought I had to burp, I don't. Oh. Great. <laughs> <laughs> also for dramatic effect, but, you know. <laughs> um, so Grady pulled the trigger on his gun and murdered Jack point blank. 
When Donna found out her fiancé had been shot, she broke down crying hysterically. Some reports say that um, he was still alive for a bit and she cradled him while he was dying. Crying. Um, Donna reported to the Associated Press that her father smiled, mocked her cries, and said, quote, I told you I would kill him. Talk about daddy issues, am I right, ladies? Yikes. <laughs> so in court, Grady openly... Co- this is insane to me. Ready? In court, Grady openly confessed to his crime and showed little to no remorse. However... He did not serve any time for the murder. I mean, what do you expect from a man that's emotionally abusive? They don't have any remorse regardless. He didn't serve time. Oh, that's weird. He used his condition his condition to his advantage. It was stated that since the prison system was not equipped to deal with his disability, confining him to such an institution would constitute cruel and unusual punishment. Grady, Sounds like our court system now. Well... He was let off with 15 years probation. Uh Uh-huh. Sounds just like it. He had free will. Honestly, his punishment should have been to be rubber banded and displayed in a tank near the hostess podium in front of a red lobster, but... We all can't get what we want. Thank you. You're welcome. And get this. After the murder, guess who came uh, walking through that door again? Mary. Mary left her husband, the um, the world's smallest man, and Grady left his second wife, Barbara, and the two remarried again. Yes. This is so... Okay. Grady swore he had quit drinking, and he was reformed. He was a new man. Only drinking water. Hydrating himself. I love water. Volunteering. At an SPCA. He would he didn't say this, I'm just you know. <laughs> Two weeks later, he became the same drunk abusive Grady. Yep, Are we that's surprised? What they do. Sure is. But uh, the chaos continued and the family still went on road on the road to tour as the lobster family. So they drew in large crowds due to his murderous behavior because now everybody knew he was a murderer on the run out here making money. People were like, hey, let me give you a buck. Weird, weird thoughts Mm -hmm. that these people have. So the traveling family consisted of Grady the third, Kathy, Harry Glenn Newman, uh, who didn't have any deformities. However, he was called the human blockhead. He had a very low IQ and he would take nails, put them up his nose, use a hammer and drive them into his skull. So, tell the class a little bit about yourself. Well, uh... <laughs> I'm shook. I'm a blackhead. <laughs> so, um... And the star of the show was the murderous Grady Styles Jr. During the off-season, the family would reside in Gibsonton, Florida. When Kathy was seven months pregnant, this is during the off-season, um, her father knocked her out of her wheelchair when she tried to stop Grady from hitting Mary. Kathy was pregnant. She was rushed to the hospital and gave birth to a premature baby named Misty, who also had ectrodactyly. The abuse continued. He was always drunk and pulled knives on the family. Shocker. So... In 1992, Stiles sat alone in his living room watching television when he was shot three times in the back of the head. Can I guess who it was? No. Damn. You already know what happened, I thought. You're about to blow my cover. I didn't know. I don't know who killed him. All right, let's take guesses. Mary. Got any other guesses? Kathy. Now you're just naming family members. Was it the son? What if I told you it wasn't a family member? Would you be shooketh? I'm shooketh. So, it wasn't long before the truth surfaced. Mary Teresa ordered her son, Harry Newman, to have Grady murdered. Harry went to their 17-year-old neighbor and fellow sideshow worker named Chris uh, Wyant. Get it, Chris. Offered him $1,500 for the murder of Grady. That's it. 
$1,500. To a 17-year-old in 1992, I guess that's, that's a, a lot. That's a lot of money. I was born in 1992. Hey, it's lit. Um, however, he did have a severely low IQ, so. Did he miss? No, he obliged. And um, it was later stated by Grady the Third that Mary may never have made this order. Harry, who had the severely low IQ, actually... Um, he may have misinterpreted Mary's statement, quote, something needs to be done. So he took that, um, she said that after she was in a heated argument with Grady. Um, and he took that as go hire hitman. So, um, some misunderstanding. Yeah. But I, I really, honestly, I'm not buying that because she ended up going to jail and it was a whole thing in court. So I really don't. I don't buy that. Also, the $1,500 came directly from Mary. So right. where was he going to get that money? Right. Um, in court, she stated, quote, my husband was going to kill my family. I believe that from the bottom of my heart. I'm sorry this happened, but my family is safe now. How sad. He, they already know he's a murderer. What more do they want? Why is she con- being convicted of anything from like for protecting herself? I'm not even going to get into it. Yes, it's disturbing and it's messed up. So, um, Chris, the neighbor, the 17-year-old neighbor who shot and killed him, um, was sentenced to 27 years in prison. He was released in 2009. Mary was jailed for 12 years and released in the year 2000. Um, And it's also a fun little fact that she had a tattoo on her butt that said Grady Stiles Jr., who gets a tattoo on the butt of her? Okay. That's weird. Your Maybe son? one of our listeners. No, 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 no. Junior. Oh, he it was, was Their him. son is the third. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot. And her son isn't the third. It's, yeah, he's that's, senior. No, that's That was dad. her stepson. Her, okay. So Grady Styles Jr. is the guy we're talking about. He had a father, Grady Sr., the first guy. Junior is the murderer. And the third one was Grady's son with Barbara. The other girl. Uh-huh. Yes. But their step, um... Mary and um, Grady the Third are our step, step by step, day by day. Um, so Grady, st- uh, um, wait, what am I? Saying? Okay, mm-hmm. so Harry was sentenced to life in prison. So Harry was um her son. That's so annoying. Um, he wasn't the one who pulled the trigger, but he was the one who kind of. Got a hitman. And um, he died in prison in 2014. And among his many tattoos was one that read, Forgive Me Mother. Oh. I know. It's sad. It's disturbing. It's messed up. So that's the story of um, the murderous lobster boy. Um, now it he is, caused a lot of ruckus. He caused a lot of ruckus. Come on, y'all. <laughs> like, I mean, it's a sad story because, like, everywhere you go, he was obviously portrayed as a monster. He was. He was a murderer. He abused, you know. But uh, looking at this objectively, before anybody comes for me, I'm not saying he wasn't a terrible person. He was an awful person. But he was put into the freak show at age seven, not by choice. You know, he was put in there. He didn't know any other life. I mean, That's obviously he, he was mocked on the daily, right. not just on the daily, because I feel like people get bullied, you know, but you, sometimes you, you deal with a bully for X amount of times. He was paid to sit there and just take shit from people, just be made fun of. I am not defending him in any way. He was an awful person. So, yeah. I don't, mm, I mean, I guess that would drive someone to become depressed which would become anger anger so i mean i guess you're not wrong i know i'm not wrong oh but i mean he clearly he was not in the right so no no um so grady the third was on the television show freak show yes yeah fun fact he didn't like his dad that much clearly Right. Yikes. Yeah. So, um, carnival's closed, y'all. Yep. Thanks closed. for coming. Closed. 
That's sad. The whole freak show thing is sad. The whole thing is sad. These people are mocked and some find, like positivity in it and some like don't want anything to do with it but their their families literally l- depend on them to make money as you learned it yeah sometimes they didn't even have a choice sometimes they were just like sold off and just... like the woolly girl i don't think she had a choice she was two years old mm-hmm. also a lot of them did have like m- they were mentally challenged so they just kind of did what they were told didn't question it didn't really think anything else of it sad Sad but true. So let's uh let's talk about something happy. Let's talk about something happy. Let's do a fun fact. Let's do a fun fact. All right, in honor of me being twenty five and losing literally all my metabolism. Did you guys what? know? You didn't know that. Like honestly, once you're twenty five, like things are literally down down the drain. You lost your metabolism. What yeah, you lose mean? like your metabolism slows down. The, you don't lose it though. You might as well after that. Well, but if you lost it, wouldn't it? Same difference. I don't think you lose your metabolism. Looks like you're losing your marbles, little Miss 25. I'm losing it. I'm going to be Alzheimer's by like... Stop. Don't say that. 30. Mm. Banging your head against a wall burns 150 calories an hour. (laughs) I love that that's your fact. (laughs) Banging your head 100 and how many? 150 times an hour burns calories. How many calories? Doesn't say. (laughs) Well, everything you do burns calories. Me sitting here, breathing heavy, smelling like pizza. Oh, no, it says banging your head against a wall burns 150 calories an hour. So it burns 150 calories. That's awful. Or you can get on a treadmill and do that like tenfold. Just saying. That's like, that's a snack pack. (laughs) I have one more and I need to say it because it's like. It made me think a lot. Okay. Yeah, things get scary when you think a lot. The average woman uses her height in lipstick every five years. Like, think of how much lipstick I use. Her height? Hu- wait. <laughs> Say that again. The average woman uses her height in lipstick every five years. How the hell are you measuring that? What does that mean? Like, your height in, like, a... I No, no, no. I, you don't have to... Ow. she's sign languaging to me because i don't know i i know if i explained it, it wouldn't come out right so but it's your height so does that mean if i have this huge tube or this tube that that has a normal diameter of a, of a normal oh, i would say that yeah and then right. you just unscrew it and then it's a whole like tube of just this. four nine she is a small person ew <laughs> wow that is incredible <laughs> That's like something you tell your kids when they babble on about a story that doesn't make sense and you want them to leave you alone. Thanks. Thank you for reading between the lines, sweetie. Um, you know, I, I knew that you consume lipstick. I didn't know it was that much. So make sure you know where your stuff is coming from. I'm not telling you what to do, but buy vegan. Make sure there's no chemicals in there. Don't test on animals. For a second, I thought you were talking to me. Oh, like, no, I'm uh, talking to you, but like the general public. But you wear a lot of lippies, girl. I do. I love lipstick. <laughs> so my fun fact um so uh, i'm just gonna read the first line in this article from the washington post in 2007 fed up with dropped calls and a string of defective cell phones Corey taylor said <laughs> said he became angry when he learned he'd have to pay 175 dollars to get out of his long-term contract with verizon wireless so he resorted to a rather extreme measure. He faked his own death. It's crazy, though. It's crazy, though. Contracts are crazy. But there is an interesting article on it, and it's it, it's real. Washington Post wrote about it. A bunch of other places uh, wrote about it, too. But it was only $175. I mean, not only $175. That's crazy to get out of a contract. To get uh, That's a lot of money. But, like, <laughs> he faked his own death. I mean, hey, take a shot. Why not? What are they going to do? Well, they found out. <laughs> <laughs> what are they going to do? Well. Um, TBH, I didn't really um, read the rest of the article, but I do know that cell phone companies charge up to $250 in the year 2007 to uh, get out of a contract. You can tweet at me. I will. Speaking of which, you guys should tweet at us. <laughs> Our Twitter handle is... Uh, Esoteric, esoteric oddity. oddity 
O D D I T I E. I E. Um, you can also add us on Instagram. Follow us, rather, um, at Esoteric Oddities. Email us at odditiespodcast at gmail.com. Right? Why are you giving me a lot? Yeah. <laughs> because I almost didn't say the Gmail part, and I almost skipped to the dot com, and I'm so happy I didn't open my mouth. I'm tired. It's all good. Um, yeah. Oh, and uh, find us on Facebook. Come on, uh, like our stuff. We share interesting articles of really crazy, interesting things. And, and thank we're you. now on iTunes. Yeah, we're on. You're li- You might be listening to us on iTunes. So thank you. If you are listening to us on iTunes, um, give us give us a rating. You know, help us out. That'd be great. Help a friend out. Help a friend out. Um, also, I mean, we're on YouTube. All we post is just the um, the podcast. If that's something you do, is just listen to YouTube videos. It's kind of if hey YouTube, if you're listening to us here, <laughs> what's up? Hey YouTubers! And thank you again for listening to us make noises with our mouths. Literally mumble and rumble. Mumble, rumble, and toil and trouble. So. Oh. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>